From Budapest, city of blood and bravery, tragedy and hope, come the first pictures of the battle which has shaken the world and of its aftermath. Here, in a few fierce days, the post-war drama of Eastern Europe reached its climax. Tanks fought against civilians and army against secret police, where a few days ago all had seemed quiet on the surface. While the battle is raging, you have to keep out of the way. But a tank asks no questions. And when a country is divided against itself, the plane flying overhead may be on your side. Or it may not. For many days, the fighting continues with now the government, now the insurgents gaining the upper hand. Running battles move from street to street. But as the toll of dead and wounded grows heavier, it becomes clear that the rebels must win for they have the great mass of people behind them. Desperately, every Nazi's government seeks a way out. A few days ago, it had asked the Russians to help. Now it begs them to leave. But some of the Soviet tanks will never leave, for they have been captured or destroyed by the insurgents they were ordered to quell. To the outside world, the struggle seems strangely confused, for not only is the government itself caught between two fires, but the rebels are a mixture of communists and anti-communists. But one overriding desire unites the rebel forces, whatever their politics, the desire to get rid of the Russians and to work out their own destiny as a nation. Hated even more than the Russians are the Hungarian secret police. And they can expect little mercy when they are caught. Only history will show how much the machine they built was responsible for Hungary's disaster. The extent of their ultimate failure is symbolized by the piles of communist literature which lie burning in the streets. The fighting is dying down. The symbols of a discredited regime are being torn from public buildings. What will emerge from the conflicts, no one can yet say. But it'll be Hungarian and not Russian. Meanwhile, from wrecked hospitals to ruined homes, there is a terrible destruction to be cleared away. The scars of a week of horror. Some of these pictures are not pretty to look at, but they should be seen and remembered. In these streets, men, women and children died for their freedom as a nation. A price any nation which allows its freedom to be stolen, or which steals freedom from others, may have to pay. A lesson which no country is exempt from learning, but which it is better to learn in time. Who can say the Battle of Budapest is over? The rising has triumphed. Will its demands be met? If a new and better Hungary is born, the fighting will not have been in vain. <laughs>